Hi, I'm Jade Hernandez, a camouflage tattoo artist and educator. I help beauty bosses effectively market their business and become the authority in their field, close more leads and make more money. In the past six years, I've launched two successful beauty businesses to multiple six figures with over a hundred five-star raving reviews and several media press spotlights. While most marketers will tell you to hustle and work harder for success, I'll show you how to create more value from the inside out so that you work less, make more, and truly expand and transform your business and life. This is the Beauty Expanded Podcast. Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I am going to get a little saucy. I actually posted an Instagram story on this very subject because it boggles my mind how much money people actually stop from flowing into their business and in their life and how they're actually repelling money and the flow of it, which is what I'm assuming is the opposite of what you're trying to do. So maybe you're not even aware of this. The question that I had posed on my Instagram story is, how much money are you leaving on the table? The example that I gave was a recent encounter with a person on Instagram. I'm not going to name her, but her zone of genius is that she is an automation specialist. Now you're probably wondering, what does that mean? So what she does is create systems, funnel systems. She'll even create software programs, or if you're already integrated into a software, she'll go into it and really help automate a flow that provides exceptional customer service to your clients. So instead of me manually texting people or emailing them, she'll literally create these systems that will do it for you automatically. And that's exactly what I'm looking for right now. I just recently purchased a robust software system that does a lot of automation, but I don't know all the gist of it, nor do I really want to invest in the time of researching and learning it. It's just not my zone of genius. It's not something that I'm passionate about, but it is something that I want to do. So that way I have more time to just be in my business and not necessarily doing the task of texting people back and emailing them. In addition, I also want to create a few funnel systems that will just help enhance our customer experience. So long story short, she pops up on my feed. I'm researching her website, her Instagram. Everything looks amazing. I book a discovery session with her that's free. We speak for about 20 minutes. Everything's just clicking. I'm asking her questions. She's answering. Everything's great. And we end the call with her telling me that she's going to send me over a proposal, a formal proposal now that she has a better understanding of what I'm looking for and how my business is where it's at right now. As I'm looking through her menu of services, and she tells me this over our consultation too, that her prices range anywhere between $500 a month and it goes upwards to $3,000. When I look through her website, I already know that I'm going to be around that $3,000 mark. And then most likely I was planning on keeping her on as a retainer. So having her be on board for at least six months, which is a minimum at $500 a month. So right there, if you do the math is I was willing to pay her $3,000 plus with a retainer fee of let's say a minimum of six months, she was going to earn an additional $3,000. So in total, we're looking at $6,000. But in addition to that, if you are truly providing value into my life, like literally on her website, she says that she makes your life stress-free and she makes your life a lot easier. And knowing that that's what she's claiming that she's able to do, I'm willing to pay a lot of money for that. At a base minimum, I'm looking at $6,000 to spend on her. But if our relationship is working beautifully, I'm happy to retain more services from her. So again, she has potential to make over $6,000 with me. And then being in the business that I'm in, people always ask me about other service providers or software programs that are helping me out. So if everything had worked out beautifully between me and her, she has the potential to double her income, if not triple, just by word of mouth referrals. But she hasn't sent me a proposal. So it's been over a week now. And I sent her a message actually this morning. But before I sent her a message, I checked my spam folder, my junk, just to be sure that her email or her proposal hadn't accidentally gotten through my spam and junk and I didn't see it. 
and nothing was there. So I reached out to her this morning, sent her a direct message, basically telling her that I don't know what happened, if there's been a misunderstanding, but it's been over a week and I still haven't heard from her. And that, and I was really direct, that I was beginning to question whether or not she was truly going to be able to make my life easier. Because here I am chasing after her. Intuitively, I knew she was actually going to reply back about having COVID. And I was right. She ended up responding back to me saying that she has COVID, that she's been in bed for most of the days, and that she hasn't forgotten about me. And I'm thinking in my head when I read her reply was that this is a lame excuse. If you have enough energy to be scrolling through Instagram, wouldn't you have enough energy to input some numbers, boop, 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 and send me over a formal proposal? In addition, why not send me a message letting me know that you feel like shit and that you need more time or that you're working on it or whatever the case is. Now, unless you're on a ventilator and you're in the ICU or something drastic like that, I totally understand that. But if you're just telling me that you feel like poop and that you're in bed, to me, that's not a valid excuse. One. Two, if your zone of genius is in the niche of automation, and this isn't even my zone of genius, but we send out formal quotes to our clients and it's literally a template that we use for everyone and we just have to change out the date, the name, and of course, their items. And so every person's quote is customized, but the actual template is automated. It's a matter of just switching out a couple of information and boom, sending it out by email. If you claim that automation is your talent and that you can do this for me and make my life so much simpler and easy, then why isn't this an easy automation for you to just send me a formal quote? Here I am wanting to give you my money. Here I am wanting to invest in you. I need the service. And because it took her so long to reach out to me, and actually I had to reach out to her, she didn't even reach out to me, she lost my business. I don't feel like I can trust her to make my life easy. I question her automation skills because how hard is it to send me a formal quote or proposal? And lack of communication. So you're already showing me how our relationship could possibly be if we decided to work together. Am I going to be chasing you for information? Am I going to be waiting weeks to get funnel systems built? If that's the case, that's not worth the $6,000. And so because of her standard of professionalism, I won't even say that there was a lack of professionalism because I believe and accept that everyone has different standards of professionalism in their business. But the fact is, is that wherever her standard is doesn't match mine because I have more expectations for my business. So maybe getting back to me in a week or two is her standard protocol, but that doesn't work for me. And so she walked away from $6,000 minimum because I'm not going to do business with her. I would rather spend the $6,000 on someone else that has a standard in their business to get back to people within 24, 48 hours. Another example of this is just this week, I wanted to book a massage for me and my assistant. And I reached out to this lady, called her, left a message, and three days later, still have not gotten a call back from her. Now her massages are $90 a person. She would have made a minimum of $180. Plus that doesn't include tip and I generously tip people. So she just lost a few hundred dollars this week by not getting back to me, one. And then two, if it was an amazing massage, of course she's going to have repeated business. And then three, I'm going to happily refer her out to other people who are looking for a massage therapist. So she just lost out on three different opportunities to exponentially double, triple her income from the fact that she didn't call me back. We took her business elsewhere and that massage place was amazing. They actually picked up the phone. They got us in that day. We tipped and they have my business now. So when I'm looking to get a massage done in the future, they will be one of the first companies that I call back. There's an actual study done of the rate of your chance of closing a prospect to how quickly you contact them back. And this statistic is mind-blowing. 
I'll have to find that actual information, but if I remember correctly, it was something within the range of 70%, which means that if you don't contact someone or call them back, text them, if you don't contact someone who reaches out to you within 24 hours, after 24 hours, it drops significantly by 70% of your chance of being able to acquire their business. Actually, after 24 hours, if you try and reach them back, Sometimes people get upset with you because they do not, will not remember that they even reached out to you about getting their brows done or about body sculpting or scalp micropigmentation. People will forget because we all live busy lives. And so when you're in that moment where you're researching online and you reach out because this is something that you want more information about or you want a book or whatever it is, if that person doesn't reach out to you in a timely manner, I think we can all agree and be able to relate that it's going to be harder for you to remember why you reached out, one, and two, even that emotional pull of your desire of wanting to get that service done begins to dissipate, or you moved on to a competitor who actually picked up their phone. I remember when I first started camouflage tattooing and I was promoting it. Back then, there was less than a handful of artists who were providing the service. And I remember the first two phone calls I got were from people out of state who had said that they had reached out to one of my competitors and they never heard back from her and that no one calls them back, no one texts. And I was able to acquire those clients just simply from picking up my phone, from actually talking to them and answering their questions. It's as simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything to pick up your phone, to send out quotes, to arrive at your consultations or your discovery sessions on time. These are things that don't cost you anything up front, but they will and could potentially cost you thousands of dollars in the back end by not doing it. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about today is when you actually start looking at numbers in that way, when you start thinking about money and the energy of money flowing into your life easily and you're attracting that flow and you're in sync with that flow, the question that you need to ask yourself is, how am I repelling money? In what ways in my habits and in my business practice am I actually repelling and stopping the flow of money? And a lot of times it's these small little details that we may not even be aware of where we are leaking money from our business and from our earning potential. On the flip side of this, I'll give you an example of where simple acts of professionalism and what I would call respect and integrity can exponentially grow your business when I hired Haley Griffith. So her zone of genius is she's a podcaster and she helps people jumpstart their podcast. She has an online course or she has a do for yourself option where she will literally submit and launch her podcast for you. And that's what I wanted. So when we went on a discovery session, same thing, it was a consultation. I looked at her menu of services and I already knew even before talking to her that I wanted to hire her at the highest premium, which was do everything for me and get it launched. I did not want to log into Apple Podcasts or Spotify to submit my podcast. I wanted someone else to do it for me. And so even before getting on the phone with her, I was already in a place where I knew that's what I wanted. So it's just a matter of meeting her and hopefully experiencing that consistency, professionalism, and congruency that she was within the integrity of what she was selling. She met me on time. She answered all my questions. She gave me a quote right then and there, and we set up the date for when we were going to launch my podcast. And she was really great with emails and getting me all set up beforehand. Long story short, she was worth every penny of the $1,500 that I paid her. It's the only reason why I was able to launch my podcast so easily and so seamlessly and so fast through hiring her. I think I may have said this in a previous episode, but this creative project was the easiest one I've ever done in my life. And it was because of Haley. She made an easy $1,500 from me. And she has the potential to attract that $1,500 and double it and triple it and essentially make thousands of dollars on top of that $1,500 just by her standard of professionalism. Because I had such a positive experience with her, I'm happy to refer her out to all of my friends who have mentioned that they want to start a podcast this year. 
if I see it on Instagram or Facebook or anyone who expressed interest in launching one, Haley, of course, is going to be the first person that I refer out. So she's in the flow of attracting more money into her life all because she picked up the phone. She showed up on time. She followed through. And so she's respecting the flow and energy of money. A few questions I like to ask is, how long are you taking? How long is passing by when someone reaches out to you, whether it's a DM on Instagram, Facebook, or they're actually calling you? How long before you pick up the phone and call them back or reply to them? Because your chances of acquiring that prospect of being in the flow of money and respecting the energy of money falls drastically if you take five minutes to reach out to them. If you take 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 45 minutes, a couple hours, and hopefully after listening to this episode, it will never be more than 24 hours. But all of those are money leaks that you may not even be aware of. I would never get back to someone within 48 hours ever. Usually when I do consultations, I'll let them know that they should expect a formal quote from us by the end of the day. But we always send it within an hour or two hours. I would rather over deliver than under deliver. And God forbid you tell someone that you're going to do something and you don't do it because they don't know you and they are hiring you based on whether or not they trust you and if you're within integrity. So if you lack integrity, if you say that you're going to do a consultation at two o'clock, but you show up at 2.15, you begin to build distrust. You begin to break the potential of creating a relationship with this particular client. I know I would begin to question your lack of professionalism and integrity if you told me you were going to meet me at 2 o'clock and you showed up at 2.15. Actually, I have a great example of that. I don't know if you guys have seen these Instagram ads for virtual assistants, but I contacted one of those companies and you know, booked their calendar for a consultation and they showed up 15 minutes late and I left the consultation. They reached out to me. They're like, hey, we're, we're online. Where are you? And I told them, I said, you know, if your business is all about representing my company and being my quote and unquote assistant, I would be pissed if you were 15 minutes late for a client because that's not how I run my business. And I told them, you completely lost my business. There was no communication to let me know that they were running late. That just shows me a lack of professionalism. And you're trying to sell me the ease of having a virtual assistant, but I don't want that type of assistant to represent me and my brands. And so this episode is really just to share with you guys how much money people are losing. I am here wanting to give these people the virtual assistant, the massage therapist, the automation specialist, I'm wanting to give them my money. It's the reason why I would even carve out time out of my schedule to book a consultation with them. I've already done my research, looked at their website. I'm an easy client. You can ask Haley. She gave me a list of things to do. By the time we met, boom, 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 it was done. I'm an easy client. I follow directions. I tip generously and I can afford these services. So when people don't show up and do as they say that they're going to do, you've lost my business. You've left money and many more earning potentials for referrals to basically double whatever it is that you make with me, triple it, quadruple it. Who knows? I mean, that's just tenfold because if I refer you someone and that person is happy with your service, don't you think that she or he is going to refer your services to their network of friends, family, colleagues? It is a trickling effect. Either money is leaking from your business or it's overflowing, your inflow of it. And those are the things that I would begin to really look at is how well are you at getting back to people? And if you know for a fact this is something that you struggle with, there are so many systems in place. I believe Instagram has something that's free where you can automate replies to people who send you messages. As long as you touch them and you make contact with them, even if it is automated and just be sure that after you're done with your session or when you wake up the next morning, depending on what time they actually contact you, that you reach out to them again, you're gold. That's all people need from you. It's just communication. And it really is 
easy to do. It's easy to implement into your business. Or you could do the opposite and not be diligent and not follow through and not be proactive and essentially stop the energy of money. And further than that, give your potential leads and earning potential to your competitors. You always have a choice to do that as well. I respect people's free will. I realize not everyone is going to have the same expectations or standards that I hold for myself and my business, and that's fine. But I also think that if you're wanting to be as successful as these six, seven-figure earners, you need to play and do business at a higher level. So that's today's episode. It's spicy. It's coming in hot. But I think it's just really important to expand your awareness on where you're at, be really honest with yourself, and figure out ways that you can make your business attract money and have it flow more easily to you, which in turn takes care of your customers in a five-star top-tier way. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'd love to connect and help you more. If you have a question you'd like for me to answer, please send it to jade at studioconceal.com. That's J-A-Y-D at studioconceal.com, and I might highlight it on my podcast. I find what's often personal is most general. So if this episode helped you, please share it with a friend who may need the encouragement and inspiration. I'll catch you on the next one.